ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் பேக் ஸோ இந்த லாஸ்ட் லெக்சர் வி வர் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் ஹவு ஆட்டம் இன்ட்ராக்ட்ஸ் வித் அன் எலக்ட்ரிக் ஃபீல்டு ஸோ வி சா தேட் வி கேன் ஆக்சுவலி கண்ட்ரோல் த பாப்புலேஷன் டென்சிட்டிஸ் இன் அ ஆட்டம் லெட் சே யூ கேன் கண்ட்ரோல் ஹவு இஃப் யூ ஹேவ் எ டூ லெவல் சிஸ்டம் வாட் வில் தி பாப்புலேஷன் in the lower state ex- ground state and the excited state we have seen that with the electric field or uh, duration of the electric field i can control whether the population is in the ground state or in the excited state so in this lecture i want to introduce how a cavity can interact with the photons okay with the the reason i want to do that is all of nanophotonics is simply design of various types of cavities right when be it a plasmonic cavity that means you know you have a small nanosphere that's actually it's it's a cavity with a certain q factor okay it's a resonant system right any resonant system i can think of it like a cavity with a certain amount of q factor and you know scattering intensity and so on so we have seen dielectric cavities we have seen photonic uh, crystals we have also seen you know uh, this uh, arrays of antennas and so on so all of these systems are essentially cavities and how does the photon interact with them okay and we sh- we'll show you today that you know there is some interesting effects that we would not imagine otherwise okay and the idea is to give you a glimpse of it it is all right if you don't follow entirely what is happening because these are fairly advanced concepts which actually people are looking at right now i mean in just i mean i'll show you data from just a few years back you know these are still active questions which people who have spent a lifetime in these areas are actually addressing so it is all right if you don't understand all of it but i would uh, i want to expose you to the frontiers that is the purpose of this course so i am actually going and you know uh, trying to talk about some of these effects in a simple way as simple as possible but i understand that some of it might be com- uh, it will take time for you to understand okay so uh, to understand how a a two level system interacts with a cavity let us go back and look at the conventional uh, what we call as fabry perot cavity i briefly mentioned it in the last week suppose you have a system which has two mirrors in the fashion that i have shown let's say you know there is a mirror 1 and a mirror 2 and the both are high reflective mirrors okay let's say they are reflecting 99% of the light so what happens when you have the first mirror if you have light incident on this from the left uh, let me show this here so if i have light incident from the left here 99% of it will get reflected and i'll get transmitted light of 1% 1% light will fall on the second mirror and then again this is again 99% reflective mirror let's say so then i'll get basically 0.01% light right transmission so if i look at just the two mirrors as they are completely separate then you should see very small transmission from it but i told you that it is not uh, exactly that way because the light also has a certain phase so when a photon let's say is incident on the electromagnetic field is incident on this it will travel a certain distance it will acquire a certain amount of phase phase and then reflects back goes back and then there is a round trip phase whenever the round trip phase acquired by the the propagating beam is equal to 2 pi constructive interference can occur right so i mean we have seen this in different context so the wave vector is here and then d right this basically wave vector times d is the the phase shift okay this is phase shift uh, d is a distance between let's say the mirrors okay yeah i'm sorry here it's l cavity so we can make it even let's say d with the cavity distance is d if you have that so now the phase shift acquired in one round trip so one trip from the left to the right and back one round trip the phase shift is basically 2kd right if you have that scenario and that round trip phase shift is equal to 2 pi an integer multiple of 2 pi okay this m is an integer now then you can have constructive interference and that is that's a very simple wave phenomena that occurs everywhere right so when you have such a scenario we will see that the transmission now through this kind of system is going to be one i i, I just briefly show i told you about these peaks that occur at wherever the round trip phase is equal to 2 pi so the x axis here round trip phase shift let's say 2 pi m and 2 pi m plus 1 so it, at integer multiples you will see this transmission peaks so the distance between the cavities is such that it's an integral multiple of wavelengths the original you know constra bohr's model and all that i mean you can think of many different analogies for this whenever you have such a scenario you have the sharp transmission now this and transmission nearly goes to 
if you have you know if you didn't consider this uh, phase effects or the addition of these phases you would simply expect that the transmission is going to be simply 1.01% but the phases adding up constructively gives you this trans tra transmission of nearly one as if the cavity is not present even though these mirrors effectively should be like 1% and 1% should be 0.01% transmitting but at that resonant wavelength it exhibits one transmission coefficient of one okay so that's a very interesting thing that it's very counterintuitive actually to think about it what is happening because if you think a little deeper why will the transmission be one here you know it's only going to transmit the so second mirror is going to transmit only 1% right then how can the transmission coefficient be one that means internally there is a lot of field that is building up if you look at the intensity let's say the intensity here and let's say the photons are going in here and the intensity is building up in such a way that many 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 round trips the photons keep cannot escape so they'll keep circulating in the cavity so that the intensity becomes 100 times larger and out of that 100 times larger intensity only 1% escapes right so basically this is not instantaneous a cavity no cavity like this can be instantaneous it has a certain lifetime the photons will keep circulating inside the intensity inside the cavity is much much higher than what is outside and because of that you will see that okay one one and uh, let's say one photon is coming in effectively one photon will come out but in between it takes a lot of time to accumulate 100 photons inside so as that only 1% of it will come out right it reaches a steady state like that right i mean it takes a long time now at some point you will have an equilibrium between the loss and the gain and so on that okay so now what happens is when you, so the question was why can't the transmission be higher than 1 so the transmission at most can be 1 because at some point you know if you want addition more than one transmission that means you have to have gain medium inside and that is what we do in a laser in a laser we take a cavity like this and we'll put a you know block of gain in between when we do that the gain medium will amplify each time the photon passes through that it will amplify the number of photons and the number of photons keeps increasing and increasing you can get transmission actually without anything you can get transmission that is a lasing right one stray photon somewhere or vacuum fluctuations can give you one photon and it just keeps building up at the constructive interference and you get a large emission intensity that is a laser oscillator okay so this is a heart of an oscillator okay so now when you have such a cavity one of the important things to look at is the line width so we have this transmission line right and then the line width i'll call it as delta omega and we know for any resonant phenomena the width is essentially proportional to the loss okay so i'll call this as the decay rate kappa the photon decay rate how how fast is the photons escaping from the cavity if you have a large decay rate then you have uh very broad resonance when you have a small decay rate you have narrow resonance right so in effect this is, i i mean i can also relate it just as an additional thing i told you that the lifetime in the lifetime of the photons in the cavity is large the photons will stay in the cavity for long time so it's inversely proportional if the photons are staying in the cavity for a very very long time uh, i should not t cavity or i call it t oh, t cavity okay so basically the photons are staying for a long time so line width is very very sharp so it's a high q cavity so the pho the the photons stay in a cavity for a long time okay so now my delta omega is a decay rate of the cavity right this is a i can say a cavity decay rate how the photons are escaping from the cavity now my q factor which is a very standard metric we use is simply omega by delta omega okay so as the reflectivity of the mirrors increases the photons stay for a long time so the delta omega will be small and overall q factor will be large okay and that's what you are seeing here as the reflectivity in this case this is plotted for various you know reflectivities of 0.7 0.8 0.9 as reflectivity increases okay the lifetime essentially basically the photons stay for long time right and then the delta omega reduces delta omega reduces implying q factor increases you are getting sharper peaks okay it turns out that it's very uh, critical to have high q factors and we will see that in a moment okay in the cavities there are a lot of interesting things can happen when you have high q factors okay so i just you know went a little bit more details about the, how the cavity is designed uh, in last week i think i mentioned this in passing all right so uh, i mean you can find more details in this uh, textbook here down all right so now okay we have a very good cavity the central problem we want to talk about today is how does the cavity interact with the atom okay so now let's look at schematically 
I'm showing you a cavity consisting of these concave mirrors. And then in between that is placed an atom, let's say, a two-level system. Okay. This is basically my two-level system. If you place such a thing in the cavity, what happens? Okay. So, in the case of a system coupled, atom coupled to a cavity, there are two regimes that are important. Okay. Before I introduce them, so this, this K, right, kappa. Kappa is basically my uh, cavity decay rate. How fast are the photons escaping from the cavity? And my gamma here is basically non-resonant decay. So basically you have photons just non-radiatively decaying or simply escaping from the cavity from the perpendicular direction and so on. Okay, non-radiative decay rate. And then I'll also introduce one more parameter which I'll call as G0. Okay, this is basically the atom and cavity, atom cavity coupling constant. Okay, coupling parameter or coupling constant. So, whenever you have a scenario of, let's say, atom coupled to a cavity system, atom cavity system, you can have two regimes that are possible, okay? Two particular re uh, regimes, wherein the first one I'll call as G0 much, much smaller than, let's say, kappa or gamma, okay? That means the coupling between the cavity and the uh, atom is small compared to the decay rate from the cavity. So what happens? You know, in this, we call it as a weak coupling regime. Okay. When the coupling is strong, uh, sorry, smaller than the decay rate and the photon decay rate or the non-resonant decay rate, we'll call it weak coupling. What happens in this case? Simply, you know, the atom will release a, a photon. Let's say when it de-excites, atom de-excites from high level to low level, it releases a photon and that photon simply gets, you know, uh, lost. I mean, it just goes out of the cavity because the decay rate is quite high. And uh, so, atom releases a photon. In this case, atom releases a photon. And this is lost from the cavity. Okay. This is a weak coupling regime. Okay. Now, the other regime that interesting things happen is what is called as strong coupling regime, wherein the coupling parameter is stronger than kappa or gamma. Okay. And we call this a strong coupling. Okay. What happens when you have strong coupling between the atom and the cavity? Well, let's consider a scenario where let's say atom releases a photon. Know, releases a photon. What do you think will happen? Well, this photon now cannot, uh, the coupling parameter is much stronger than the decay rate. So it will not decay from the cavity. It's still within the cavity. Say maybe it bounces back and then comes back and interacts with the atom again. Okay. So once the atom is uh, releases a photon, photon uh, moves around in the cavity, right? Interacts with the cavity, with cavity and uh, comes back or you know it basically re-interacts you know re-excites an atom you can say okay and re-excites the atom okay before irreversibly being lost so there is a strong interaction between the cavity and there is an exchange of photon I would say a fo atom releases a photon to the cavity cavity again gives it back to the atom so there is this exchange that happens between the atom and the cavity Okay, this is a strong coupling regime. And today, my, you know, this particular lecture, my goal will be to try to show you some examples of what is strong coupling, what is weak coupling, and that's it. Okay, that's my goal. So, just understand this, you know, difference, that's it, you know. And I'll show you one result, I think, which is counterintuitive, you would not expect. I'll just show you what happens in the strong coupling. And then, uh, that with that, I'll close the lecture today. Okay, this particular lecture. So, before I go into it, before I go into the strong coupling, I want to discuss a little bit about the weak coupling regime. You no, know? weak coupling. I said it does not. You know, a photon. Uh, let's say an atom uh, emits a photon, right? Does the cavity play any role? Okay. The question is, does the cavity play any role in the weak coupling? The interaction is not you know strong, right? 
but it turns out that there is still some impact of the cavity and the impact comes through basically your the quality factor okay because the cavity has a certain quality factor the first slide we have seen and we said that let's say the q of the cavity was omega by delta omega and we also said delta omega is essentially the line width is related to the decay rate right cavity decay rate so i can also write it as omega by kappa okay so that tells me that if i have a system where my q factor is large my decay rate is going to be small and it can actually give you some interesting features okay uh, the other thing i have to introduce i am not really going to uh, justify how this is and i am going to give you an expression it's not necessary for you to remember the expression at this point but just note that the g not right the coupling parameter so far we have not described what it is the decay rate we know 1 over q i mean basically we, from the q factor we can find out what is the decay rate omega by q will give you the decay rate okay the uh, the non radiative decay is anyway known for the material okay the g not we have not introduced so far so what i'll tell you is the g not is going to be uh, <coughs> mu 1 to the so dipole moment square omega divided by 2 epsilon not h cross v not square root i'm not really telling you how this is coming about okay it will become clearer in i think uh, next couple of weeks when we talk about the quantum optics part just for now just understand that as i reduce the cavity volume my coupling rate increases okay so now i mean if you go back and look at it my uh, let's say the strong coupling right for strong coupling we said g not has to be much much greater than kappa or gamma right gamma is a the, the non radiative decay rate when will this happen well there are two scenarios wherein it can happen okay one is q factor is large when the q factor is large my decay rate photon decay rate kappa is going to be small so my whatever my cavity you know uh, strong coupling uh, sorry the g not parameter is a coupling parameter that's going to be larger than the kappa and the second scenario is when volume of the cavity is small volume of the cavity is small what happens when volume of the cavity is small well you know <laughs> we, we showed you that the volume is appearing in the denominator so g will be large. the coupling parameter is going to be strong okay so these are the two scenarios where you know you can have strong coupling okay the other uh regime is the weak coupling regime let's say i have in a weak coupling scenario i have g not to be smaller than gamma or kappa right so this is a weak coupling what happens when you have weak coupling okay some way, one interesting feature once interesting effect happens and in nanophotonics community it is very very commonly used we talk of something called as parcel factor okay this is a or parcel effect so parcel factor okay we call it as fp parcel factor and that is simply equal to the decay rate in the cavity divided by the decay rate in free space okay so now uh, what happens is you have a certain emitter let's say any quantum dot or something any dye molecule or whatever you leave it in va vacuum it emits photons and decays that's the decay rate in the vacuum but the moment you put it in a cavity it behaves differently okay and the difference is captured by this parcel factor okay and uh, i mean there is some amount of theory associated with that we can ignore it right now okay i'll just show you the implication of it that's it that should be sufficient for this introductory course okay so now this parcel factor i can show that it is basically equal to 3q the q factor lambda by n whole uh, cube divided by 4 pi square and uh, v not okay so basically whenever i have a very small volume of my cavity i have a strong parcel factor or you have you know basically strong volume here strong volume volume or high q cavity cavities give large parcel factor okay 
ہائی والیوم سوری اسٹرانگ میں بھی اسٹرانگ والیوم آئی شوڈ سے اسمال والیوم ناٹ اسٹرانگ والیوم ایم سوری اسمال والیوم اوکے اسمال والیوم اور ہائی کیو دے گیو یو اے لارج پرسل فیکٹر اینڈ واٹ از اٹ مین لارج پرسل فیکٹر ویل سمپلی ایف یو ہیو اے سینیریو ویئر لیٹ سے ایف پی از گریٹر دین ون اوکے دیٹ مینس دا اسپانٹینیس ایمیشن از گونٹ ٹو بی اینہینسڈ اسپانٹینیس ایمیشن is enhanced the other scenario where fp is smaller than 1 spontaneous emission is inhibited what do you mean by spontaneous emission is enhanced well let's say you have a scenario where the excited state has a population of 100 and it decays it let's say in 2 nanosecond it decays the excited population will come down to 1 over e that's let's say in free space the moment you put in a certain type of cavity it can happen that instead of in 2 nanoseconds the whole thing will come down in 50 picoseconds that means the rate at which spontaneous emission occurs can be much much uh, faster that's why spontaneous emission is enhanced okay when will this happen let's say when the cavity has lot of density of states available uh, states available for that wavelength it will decay fast or if you somehow suppose create a photonic band gap okay and in the photonic band gap if the wavelength of the emitter or atom is in the band gap then there are no states available for the photon to emit okay provided the non radiative rate is large or small non radiative rate is small you will see that the spontaneous emission will be inhibited instead of 2 nanosecond 2 nanoseconds of spontaneous uh, lifetime spontaneous emission lifetime you will have 5 nanoseconds maybe so that is inhibition of spontaneous emission okay i think it's much more rarer to see this it's much harder to see this but it should happen okay provided your uh, non radiative decay is small rate is small all right so now you have this scenario of uh, cavity influencing it still seems to be just uh, you know some ratio okay it's faster or slower you might say why should i care 